All right, guys, so many of you have been asking about the Droid Turbo and how to get things going on this thing now that we have an unlocked bootloader. So to do this, we're going to go ahead and hold volume down and power from the powered off state, and we're going to boot into bootloader mode right here. As you can see, mine says uh, devices unlock status code 3. So what we're going to try to go through today is basically removing King Root and getting Super Su going and Torp, uh, Torp Recovery installed. So we'll have proper root access on our device. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and plug in the device here. And if you don't have Motorola drivers installed, um, they should auto install. But if not, you know, we'll test that as we go here to make sure everything's functioning. So we got our device set up. The first thing we got to do is we got to flash a system image, stock system image to our device. Um, and the reason we're going to do this is to oh, totally eradicate King Root off the system because it's really annoying. So. Basically, to do that, we're going to come in here to, let's see here, we're going to shoot to our computer. Let me go over here and show you what we're working with. All right, guys, here we go on the computer. So I'm going to show you some files you're going to need. This is my download server. Um, you're going to need your ADB and Fastboot files or the Android SDK installed. So you'll click on this, you'll download this file, and it'll be the files you need. Extract it and put it on your desktop, and we'll work out of that folder. All right, besides that, you're also going to need your drivers. So if you don't already have them functioning, you can download the latest Motorola drivers, 64 or 32-bit, depending on what your computer is. All right, one more file we're going to need is Droid Turbo. We're going to need to download the latest firmware, which is this file right here. And um, I'll link you to it as well. This is the firmware you run when you unlock the bootloader, and this will have the system image included in it. So you'll download that firmware right there. That's a pretty big file. It's going to take some time. Um, besides that, you can also come over here and you can download the latest Twerp recovery image and have that on your computer as well. And then you're really going to be all rocking. Okay, so you get all these files. Once we have the files, um, we're going to go into the A to B Fastboot folder, which mine looks like this. It's got other stuff in it, but you're basically going to have these four files. Right here on your computer, in this folder, just go ahead and hit Shift on your keyboard, right click, open command window here. This is gonna open up a terminal so that we can type in some commands. So to make sure our drivers are functioning correctly, we're gonna type in fast boot devices, if I can spell correctly, and hit enter. Fast boot devices did not work. If this happens, come over here with your volume keys, Scroll down to reboot bootloader, hit power, and this should reboot the bootloader on the device. And it now should function. And you might be installing some drivers here as also. So we'll do that command one more time. Now it comes back with the serial number and says fast boot. That means our device is functioning correctly and our drivers are working. So now we can go ahead and flash that stock system to eradicate King Root off our device. So to do that, we're just going to go ahead and type in fast boot flash system and then we got to flash the correct system image so to do that we're going to go to firmware and here's the firmware that you get when you download it and then once you extract it you're left with this file you open that file we have a whole bunch of system chunks so we're going to try to flash all of these system chunks See them all right there? Now, I'm pretty sure we can do that with a batch file. So let me see what we've got here. Now let's do it this way. Let's go ahead and edit this batch file. I'll show it to you. See? Pretty cool, huh? So we're going to edit this batch file and we're going to remove all of this. And we're going to remove this and this and this so that, oh, that one too. Basically, if we do this, we've got, we're setting the OM, uh, we're setting the, uh, actually, you know, let's get rid of that too. Basically, all you want to do is you want to flash system and you want to wipe erase cache. And these first two are just some mode sets and clears, which is fine. So then what you want to do is you want to go file save as and we're going to tail this thing to save as um, we'll call it system 
system dash flash. All right. Okay. Now that we've got that, close this out. And we should have this system flash file right here. So we're just going to copy all of this, all those system chunks and system flash file we just created. We'll copy them and we're going to copy them to platform tools and paste them here. All right. Now that's like three gigs of files. It's quite a lot of files. But with that, we should be able to now just double tap that system flash bat, bat file and it'll go ahead and flash system for us. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now, actually. So let's give it a shot. All right. So as you can see, we should be flashing system. Now, this is kind of a pain because there's 10 system chunks that, um, you know, in a lot of other systems like Nexus's will just have one system image and you can flash it and be done. Uh, Motorola does it a little differently. So it has all these little tiny chunks and you've got to flash 10 of them. So it's kind of annoying, but it is how Motorola devices function. So basically we're just waiting on these system chunks to flash and then we can go on with some more of the process. So to do this, let's go ahead and let that run. While it's running, let's get some more files here. So the other file you need is that, that Quark file right there. Actually, it's right here already. So you've got that one there. And that's what we're going to flash next to get us into um, recovery. And then we can go from there. Uh, also recommend that you have, obviously, that SuperSue file on your device. If you don't, we can push it with ADB, which is probably what I'm going to show you guys how to do. Once Twerp Recovery boots up, we'll show you how to push it with ADB, which is pretty cool. All right, so there you go. That was the last system chunk. And then it says right here, pressing the key to continue. That will close out that script. We still have our original one open right here. And um, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're actually going to do a fast boot reboot dash boot loader. This is just going to reboot the device really quick, the bootloader. So we'll do that really quick. And then we'll do fast boot devices. All right, so we're good. So then we're going to do fast boot flash system. I'm oh, sorry, flash boot flash recovery. So fast boot flash recovery. And then the easiest way to do this is just to drag the image into the system right there. So fast boot flash recovery and the recovery image and hit enter. That's flashing it. Now we're going to do fast boot. Well, you know what? We can actually do this without doing it this way. We'll do this on the, on the device. So over here on the device, we're going to go ahead and just scroll down, scroll down with volume. And then it says recovery mode and push power. Again, there's your bootloader warning. And this should boot us right into twerp recovery or team win recovery project. There we go. Here we want to say allow modifications. So we'll swipe across. And then if you don't have Twerp Recovery already downloaded to your device at this point, we can push it over with ADB. Let me show you that. So we'll, we'll come into this window. We'll type ADB devices. And it should say your serial number and recovery. That means ADB is functioning, which is awesome. So then we just need to find our file. So for me, I'm going to come here. Let me go back to my file system here. Super Sue right there. There is the latest, so we'll copy that. And we'll go back to my platform tools and we'll paste. There you go, so now I have that file as well. Open the command window and we're gonna type ADB push. And we'll just uh, drag that file in there. Space. Um, slash SD card slash hit enter and there you go so now it should be on the internal SD card back to you know what we're actually done on our computer from here so let's uh, wrap this up back to the device here hit power to wake it back up and we'll go to installs and actually there you go you can see it right there oh, SD card download we'll go up one because I actually put mine on the SD card so mine's right there that's where yours should be if you do the same command as mine. We'll just select it and we'll swipe across to flash. 
unable to mount cash. Interesting. Had some problems mounting cash. Still can't mount cash. Probably because we wiped cash and it never repopulated itself. Um, not sure if that's going to be a problem or not. Let's go ahead and reboot and see. So here's our reboot. And this should give us Torp Recovery, Super Sue, Get Rid of King Root. That is my hopeful plan anyway after this thing boots. All right, here we go. Everything is booted up. Let's go into our app drawer. And there you go. So if you had King Root installed on here, just go ahead and uninstall it. You should be able to at this point. Just drag it up and do an uninstall. And then you should be able to go into Super Sue. Boom. No errors or anything. That's a good sign. And then you can also go into Root Checker. Verify Root Access. Grant. Shabam. Wow, that's a beautiful thing. So now we have proper root access functioning and working with Torp Recovery installed in SuperSue. There you go, guys. That is the way I would do it. That's how I would get around anything going on here with uh, King Root and getting that fully off your system. And then obviously getting SuperSue and Torp installed as well, all through computer and some quick commands. There's a lot of files here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it wasn't too much for you. But uh, that's pretty much how it gets done. That's the way I would go about it and uh, get, get everything functioning and working for you. King Root puts a lot of hooks into your system that you really don't want. And it's best to get rid of, from my experience with the application, it's very hard to delete unless you totally wipe your device. But there you go. I still got all my apps installed and we're rocking it. Also, check out Flashify, awesome application if you're interested. It's going to wrap it up for me. Stay tuned for more videos here on the Turbo, and we'll probably be doing a CM12 install very soon. Catch you guys later. Root Junkie out.